is this? I have a boyfriend, George. Alan Hako is going to be here today. That's... As you know, Alan Hako is one of my favorites going out there. Uh, East Coast is where we're going to be doing the interview. So during the commercial break, we're going to hop in Peter Mansbridge's private helicopter, and we're going to fly to Montreal. We're going to pick up Justin Trudeau, then we're going to fly... None of that's actually going to happen. We are going to go to Newfoundland. We're going to sit down with Red Chairs in Grossmore National Park with Alan Hock, a beautiful place where men are men, women are women. Sometimes men are women, women are also men, and women occasionally mermaids. It's hard to tell because they're all so damn beautiful. <laughs> that's what it's going to be like in Newfoundland. Basketball fans, are you ready? Got your brackets all made up? March Madness. March Madness starts for real tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you something that has come up again, or maybe not. It seems we do this every year, but more reports coming out about the largest... That was the right choice of words. The biggest increase? Vasectomies are up. <laughs> this time of year. Apparently doctors are even told flat out by their patients that they go get their vasectomies now, on purpose, so they can be out of commission and lay on the couch and watch basketball. <laughs> for the opening round of 64, to which I can only say, gentlemen, dudes, brothers in arms, a bit drastic, right? <laughs> if you just want to sit on the couch from Thursday to Tuesday and just watch basketball, that's an easy fix. Have sex with your partner on Wednesday. <laughs> you can do it on Wednesday, get your plumbing fixed. It seems like a far more drastic thing. Okay, there's a lot to get to in the world. Shall we deal with today? <laughs> All right, right at the top. Right up the top, if by chance you happened to be traveling between Ottawa and Toronto this morning by train, you may have noticed that you weren't on a train, that you were actually on a bus, and that's because of this blockade erected by Mohawk protesters drawing attention to murdered and missing Indigenous women across the country. A big report from a special committee of MPs released earlier this month stopped short of launching a public, a public inquiry, which is one of the things that the activists on the front of the line really wanted. And I know it's easy to get upset about an inconvenience in your day or disruptions in a, in a significant way. But Aboriginal women are more than three times as likely to be victimized than non-Aboriginal women. That is a stunning number, right? Three times. So even though it has, you know, complicated, like I said, disruption, even a hassle, think about why these people are out there on the front line in the first place doing this protest. Maybe we need more from uh, the people in charge. Go to strombo.com for more information as to why this is actually happening. Also, I want to let you know that not only is tomorrow officially the first day of spring, even though we know it's <laughs> Spring my ass. It's also the International Day of Happiness, established by the United Nations in 2012. The UN, bringing sanctioned happiness all over the world since... <laughs> Maybe never. It's actually bigger than that. It's to recognize that everyone has a right to not just happiness, but in truth, has a right to economic well-being and access to a decent life. Now, not just, just those people lucky enough to live in the global north, although for many of us who don't have to deal with some of the significant hardships faced by the majority of the human population, let us just say that there's something apropos about the day being held right around the time of the year when you are willing to admit that your New Year's resolutions were stupid and you're never going to do them anyway. <laughs> Learn Muay Thai as if. <laughs> Give up binge-watching Murder, She Wrote. Never happen. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning, I feel like Jessica Fletcher's talking to me. <laughs> I took one hot yoga class, and I sweat more than a New Jersey business person in a bathhouse. <laughs> I'm never doing that again. So tomorrow, you've got to do two things, okay? You've got to up your global equality index IQ and do something that makes you, or perhaps more importantly, make someone you care about Happy. Makes a stranger happy. Sounds cliche, but do it, because most of you don't smile more as much as you need to, right? So do something for somebody else tomorrow. I, for example, I'm going to do, I'm going to pay attention to something that I know has been abandoned for a long time. I'm going to water Justin Bieber's plants. I know <laughs> he's forgotten. I'm going to have an exact replica of a Don Cherry wild suit made so that when I show up for Hockey Night in Canada, people are going to think I'm Don's son. <laughs> and then, oh no. And then I'm going to dress up in a rainbow suit and I'm going to climb the flagpoles at City Hall just to give the mayor a rash, okay? Yeah. 
And I'm gonna help out the people at HBO and the people in anonymous content who make True Detective, and I'm gonna pitch them season two, me and Margaret Atwood. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Can I, uh, listen, I don't, I don't, I, I, we really want to be inclusive on this program, and I don't want to spend a lot of time making fun of people in certain situations, certainly based on their religion or their choices, but sometimes one's choices lead to situations that are comical. <laughs> Police in rural Pennsylvania are looking for the perpetrator of a hit and run. Nobody was hurt. A Honda CRV was hit by, wait for it, an Amish horse and buggy. The horse and buggy hit the car and then took off. <laughs> Police don't have description of the buggy, but they actually do have um, audio, like microphones in the neighborhood picked up the sounds of the accident. Take a listen. <laughs> you know, my expert ears just hearing that again, um, less of a hit and run and more of a hit and canter. Where are my equestrians at, people? Come on now. Listen. I don't know this for sure, but I, I, I'm guessing that the reason that the person ran from the crime scene is because God's divine reassurance is not a valid form of insurance in anybody's mind, okay? <laughs> now it's time for the random favorite tweet of the day. I'm not going to say 100% of the women, because some women aren't into men, and some women who are into men aren't into this guy, but let's just say 95% of the women who are into men, and at least 95% of the men who are into men, and probably 20% of the men who are into women but aren't sure that they're actually into men, <laughs> can agree that George Clooney, reasonably attractive. Yeah. Right? Right? And he's got a new lady love, her name is Amal. Kathy, whom I don't know, just tweeted this and it made me laugh and I wanted to share with you. So George Clooney is dating that Lebanese chick, there's hope for me after all. That just made me laugh. That's exactly what I thought when Jackie married uh, Onassis, by the way. But Hillary Clinton has returned zero of my calls. And finally, <laughs> Amazing Race Canada auditions are now underway. Take a look at the first submission. Listen. If you were the subject of that Toronto police report today and you read some of the things that the Toronto police said that involved you, you would run too. And that's your debrief.